Salve a tutti amici di Comics Reporter e Fumetto Mania, oggi abbiamo un altro invitato per il nostro spazio dell'intervista. Oggi intervisteremo il leggendario Tom De Falco, scrittore per la run di Thor Thunderstrike, co ha scritto la run di Amazing Spider-Man, ha scritto Fantastici 4, lo ricordiamo tantissimo in Italia per la miniserie Machine Man, ha scritto anche la serie The New Warriors, ma soprattutto lo ricordiamo per essere stato editor in chief della Marvel Comics dal 1987 al 1994. Buongiorno Tom, welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you, thank you. Allora, cominciamo con la prima domanda, Tom. La prima domanda. Allora, la prima domanda ce la propone Crisis in Comics e ci chiede, per favore, un commento sulla tua lunga e fantastica run di Thor e di Spider-Man insieme al disegnatore Ron Friends. My experience with Ron Friends was always terrific. Uh, Ron and I met many, many years ago and um, we met at a comic book convention. We went out to dinner. Uh, there was a handful of us creative people. We went out to dinner and Ron and I started talking and realized we all, we, we both like the same kind of comics. And um, a couple of years later, um, the editor of Spider-Man asked me if I, if I could uh, fill in for Roger Stern. Um, and he, uh, he said, um, and I said, oh, is John Romita still, John Romita Jr. had been drawing it. I said, is he still gonna be drawing? He says, no, Ron Friends is. Do you know Ron? And I said, yeah, he, he's a great guy. I, I, I met him one time and, uh, and um, you know, we had a great time together. So yeah, he, he'll be terrific. And Ron and I started working together and I didn't realize how terrific he was. Um, I, you know, my, my humble opinion is that Ron Friends is probably one of the greatest uh, visual storytellers this medium has ever seen. Um, he, he thinks in term everything he thinks of is in terms of artwork and story uh, but it's all more a story than than even the artwork as as far as he's concerned the story is the story is the boss and ron and i started to work together and started throwing out ideas and and i you know i now say that uh, when you look at our stories together all the good ideas were ron's and all the bad ones were mine Benissimo. Andiamo alla seconda domanda. Questa volta tocca a Marco Grande che chiede Tom, quando hai iniziato a scrivere Amazing Spider-Man, sapevi che Roger Stern aveva deciso che Hobgoblin doveva essere Kingsley? No, I did not. Um, originally, Roger was, was not going to make a mystery out of it. And I... I I said to him, no, no, make a mystery out of it, like the original Green Goblin. And he thought about it and he said, okay, but I'm not going to tell you, you know, who it is. I'm going to just keep it a secret. And I said, all right. I, I was the editor at the time. And I said, oh, okay, but um, I have a little experience with mysteries. So uh, I'm, I'm going to keep a checklist. Uh, and at, anytime anybody is eliminated, I'm going to cross them off the checklist. And uh, when, when, once you've decided who it is, I'll, I'll, I'll decide whether or not that works. And, um, you know, that's how, how, how we went. Okay, andiamo alla terza domanda, sempre dal pubblico. Questa volta è il turno di Chris Machaud, che ci chiede, Tom, sei stato tu a decidere che il costume nero fosse un cattivo? Se sì, lo sapevi dall'inizio? I, I didn't know it was going to turn, you know, evil. I, um, when the black costume was introduced, that's around the time I took over Spider-Man. And I, uh, I remember going to Jim Shooter and saying, hey, this black costume has all sorts of special powers. How do they work? And he turned to me and he said, well, you're the writer. Come up with something. Um, and that's when I decided that it was a, a symbiote that essentially an alien life form that had attached to Peter Parker. Now, I always thought that it, the symbiote, because it had bonded with Peter, kind of loved Peter, but once Peter rejected it, hated Peter. But I thought it, you know, it was an alien. So our, our notions of good or evil, 
really didn't apply to it. So I, I never thought of it as, as evil. Dave Michelinie later took took the concept and and um, and bonded the symbiote with Eddie Brock and 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 you know co-created Venom with uh, Todd McFarlane. And I thought that was a just a brilliant idea. And I, I give you know total credit to to Venom to those two guys because I wasn't smart enough to come up with it. Benissimo, benissimo. La, seguite, la successiva domanda ce la, pro, ce la pone Maurizio Clausi e ci dice, parliamo adesso del tuo periodo come editor-in-chief alla Marvel Comics. Tom, cosa ti proponevi di fare quando sei diventato editor-in-chief per la Marvel Comics? When I became editor-in-chief, um, my goals were connected to the freelancers. The, 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 the one goal that I had in mind and, and I, and I you know, fought with upstairs for, I, I guess, my entire time with, was I wanted the creative people to be paid for foreign licensing. Um, whenever the comics are reprinted in another country, the uh, Marvel doesn't, you know, pay, you know, pay the writers or the artists or the inkers. And, and I always thought that was grossly unfair. And I, I remember, um, I guess it was the day after I became editor in chief, I turned to Mark Rumo and said, we are going to get our guys paid for foreign licensing. And that was my, my number one goal. And, um, You know, and for seven years, I tried to get that to happen, and I failed miserably. So uh, a lot of times I look back on my time as editor-in-chief, and I just think of it as a failure. Questa volta è il turno di Fabio Butera che chiede, Tom, ma sei stato uno degli autori eh, alla Marvel del nuovo universo, del new universe. Puoi raccontarci com'è nata questa storia, per favore? The idea for the new universe came from Jim Shooter. He wanted to do a, a universe that was much more down to earth, uh, much more closer to the world outside your window. Um, he had a lot of rules, uh, no aliens, no advanced technology. Um, he wanted the dialogue to be much more realistic. It was kind of a revolutionary idea at the time. And, um, I, I don't think the market was ready for it. A, a few years later, when Jim Shooter went over to Valiant Comic Books, he essentially did the new universe in Valiant. If you look at the new universe characters, almost most of them, you know, copy new universe characters from, uh, from, from the new universe. Um, and I, I think a couple of years later, it, it worked a lot better Than, than when we launched the new universe. I, I just don't think either the creative people or the market was ready at the time. Okay, benissimo, benissimo, grazie per la tua risposta. Tom, una, una domanda questa volta che proponiamo noi di Comics Reporter. In Italia sei stato molto apprezzato per il tuo lavoro su Thor, su Amazing Spider-Man, su New Warriors, ma una miniserie che ha veramente avuto un grande successo in Italia che è piaciuta veramente tanto, è la miniserie di Machine Man, disegnata da Herb Crimp e da famosissimo Barry Winslow Smith. Puoi raccontarci com'è nato questo lavoro, questo progetto, per favore? Um, sure, that's... Uh, uh, Machine Man has a very special place in my heart. Uh, when I... The, the first Marvel title that I wrote regularly was the Machine Man book um, Jack, that Jack Kirby had created, and then later on Steve Ditko did, and, and Marv Wolfman wrote, and, um, and I followed Marv Wolfman, had the incredible pleasure to work with Steve Ditko for, I think, about five issues. So I always loved the character. Um, uh, you know, the, the book did not sell, uh, was eventually canceled. And, and a couple of years later, I was talking to uh, Larry Hama, one of the great unheralded uh, creative people in, a, in our industry, 
a, a, a true genius, a great artist, great writer. And uh, Larry and I were, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth. And Larry said, uh, uh, let, let, let's work together on something. And I said, y you know, I, 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 I want to work with Herb Trimpey. Um, and he says, well, what, what character would you like to work with? And I said, I don't know. Maybe it's time to bring Machine Man back. And uh, he says, but then don't, don't do it the way you, you used to do it. Come up with something new. And I said, fine. I called up Herb and I said, hey, Herb, you want to do Machine Man? And Herb said, ah, I never even heard of the character. <laughs> Who's Machine Man? I said, uh, it's a character I used to write. And, and, Her and Herb and I were, were good buddies. And Herb said, oh, if you're going to write it, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I said, well, do you want to know anything about it? He says, no, 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 it's okay. I said, because I'm, I'm, I want to come up with something crazy. And he says, the crazier, the better. And I, I took that as a challenge and, uh, you know, and then started thinking, you know, how can we start off this story in a unique way? And I remember the last scene in Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, the boxes, you know, and I thought, hey, what if, what if somebody finds a box a machine man's in it? And, uh, and, uh, and then the story flowed from there. And uh, Herb and I, I, I called him up. I started throwing ideas at him and he started throwing ideas back at me. And we were just having a grand old time. And I think uh, we, we, we finished, Herb and I finished the first issue and started working on the second issue. And uh, Barry Windsor Smith is a friend of Herb. And Barry happened to show up at Herb's house and he looked and he saw these pages and he said, wait a minute, what, what kind of nonsense are you guys doing? What is, this is crazy, this stuff. And Herb said, yeah, well, I'm working on this thing with Tom and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and Barry said, well, who's going to ink it? And Herb said, I don't know, maybe I'll ink it. And Herb looked at it, uh, uh, Barry looked at it and he says, how about I ink it? So Barry called, uh, so Herb called up uh, Larry Hama and said, hey, would it be okay if Barry Smith <laughs> inked the uh, ink machine man? And Larry Hammer said, yeah, wait a minute, the real Barry Smith? <laughs> and, uh, and that's how Barry Smith joined, joined the, uh, you know, joined the uh, party. And, the, and um, Larry, Barry, Herb, the, the, the four of us, we just had a, you know, a crazy time because we kept coming up with, you know, more nonsense. Um, and I remember at the end of, I, I, I don't remember which issue, but at one of them, I, I said, you know, I'm sticking in this character called Arnold Stark. He's the Iron Man of 2020. <laughs> and, I, and he's got to look like, he's got to look like a bad guy. And Herb said, how do you make Iron Man look like a bad guy? I said, I don't know, that's your problem. <laughs> so... It was, it was just, it was just a lock. We were just, you know, four goofballs having, having a lot of fun. Benissimo, Tom. Veramente una, una risposta molto divertente, la tua. Noi eh, ti ringraziamo tantissimo per il tuo tempo che ci, hai, che ci hai dedicato per questa breve ma molto bella intervista. Ti ringraziamo da parte di Comics Reporter e Punctomania. Alla prossima. Eh, grazie sempre. Grazie, Tom. Grazie di tutto. Ciao. Grazie. Well, thank you. Thank you, you very much also. It is so nice to, that the work is remembered. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much for being thank there. You. I am very grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice thank weekend. you very much. Nice to meet okay. you. Ciao, grazie. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Grazie. Bye-bye. <laughs>